September 20, 2021, as National Recovery Month in Redmond, and call upon our community to observe this month with appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies to support King County's recovery month theme. Recovery is for everyone, every person, every family, every community. Good evening, everyone. My name is Miguel Messina, the Chief Program Officer for UP Site Services. I'm here today to accept the proclamation on behalf of the agency. Um, the Um, thank you for this opportunity this evening. I, I have to tell you, I'm a bit nervous. 
I didn't know what to expect from her. They have a list of questions versus an actual speech. So I'll speak from the heart, how about? Um, so I'm passionate, this is the first time I'm here today speaking um, because I'm very passionate about this. I grew up in West, in West Seattle, have lived in the area for almost over 40 years since we came to the United States. My parents, my family are refugees from Vietnam. So believe me when I say, I truly believe in programs to help the needy, okay? Believe me when I say that. Because we certainly tapped into those resources the first few years in the United States. But my parents then worked two jobs and three jobs to raise their nine kids in the U.S. without any help from the government. I went to Seattle Youth, graduated from Seattle Youth, worked full time, put myself to school, took a bus from West Seattle, multiple buses, connections, and waited on First Avenue. Um, I went to school late at night, took a bus late at night. And I can tell you, this, uh, back then, when I went to school, I saw things on the streets in Seattle. I really did. But I was never concerned or afraid, ever. But I can tell you, the last two years, and this was even before COVID, I can tell you for the first time in my life, I felt like I had to carry something with me, be it pepper spray or not, to protect myself. So this is something that I certainly want to prevent to happen here on the east side. As I said, I grew up in West Seattle, lived on the east side now as an adult. I'm in Seattle quite a bit, weekly. And it, it is painful for me to see what I'm witnessing that's been, I would say, the last four to five years, actually, when the city has had so much money uh, that I've ever, you know, we're hearing about over a billion dollars a year we spent on housing, yet I'm a little bit puzzled as to why our problem that is the worst I've ever seen it to be. So with that said, it's Ying mentioned it earlier in terms of the group that we're speaking in terms of the, 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 the silver cloud in turning to a housing here on the east side in Redmond is that we're considered non-compassionate people, and I beg to differ that. It's because we truly care about the people out there in the streets, and month, this month you mentioned September is Awareness Month for mental health and drugs, recovery, I truly hope that is a case to be addressed and it's not just about housing. My personal feeling on that is housing is the end result of what's the underlying cause. So if we were to move forward with this housing hotel and move, we move people into this hotel as housing, my question then comes, and it was not answered the other night, what's the plan in place to truly help people recover from mental health and drug addiction. My other question then is, we asked about in terms of, you know, success. No one can seem to answer that question. I actually raised a question, can you please just give me us one example, just one, because there's several housing in North Seattle, in downtown Seattle, in South Seattle, as a matter of fact, health through housing, because that is part of this program, it's health for housing that was purchased this hotel. The Inn at Queen Anne, Extended Stay American Renton, Holiday Inn Express Suite in North Seattle. Okay, I'm that, that, I mean, any example, any of that has had success, and what does that look like? How many people have been able to help, not just housing? In conclusion, your time is up. Okay, so in conclusion, it's, it's those, so what does that look like success that we need to have in place, evidence-based, because we should have a lot of examples. We're only asking for one. Sam, that this is a successful program. Thank you very much. I'm new to this, and in fact, I'm rather new to the concept. I really have not been as aware of what was going on in my community as I should have been. I have some primarily questions about this. Um, I want to know who 
is going to be managing this facility? Is it going to be a nonprofit agency? Is it going to be a governmental agency? Is it going to be some other kind of, of ad hoc agency? Is it going to be self-governed by the people living there? Uh, everyone needs housing. Unfortunately, our resources are not infinite. And we have to try and put those resources that we have to areas that will do the most good. And in my mind, that is treatment facilities. I don't know, is this facility going to be open to people who can continue to use drugs and drink and do whatever they want in this facility? Or is it going to be a clean and sober housing for those who are actively seeking recovery? Is there going to be any kind of treatment available within the facility? Are there going to be counselors available? Are there going to be a, is there going to be a referral service for those who need help and don't know where to find it? Uh, what is the population going to be? Is it going to be co-ed? Is it going to be one sex or the other or one group of people? I presume it's going to be co-ed because that makes the most sense. Is it going to be people in recovery? I would like to see it in people who are working very hard to recover. There are people who come out of treatment, they're very vulnerable to re to re-establish their old patterns. It's a very difficult thing to do to change. And I'd, I'd like to see that. And lastly, what is the impact on the surrounding community? The schools, there's a daycare right across the street. If it's going to be open to current users, I would be lucky to have my child in that daycare. Probably all of you would. What about the other businesses in the area? What about the residents in local areas? My understanding is that one of the best ways to, or the easiest way to support a drug habit is to sell drugs or prostitution. We have too many vulnerable people too close to that facility. Children who need the protection. That's basically, and I got some answers. That's it.